sent to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for me. He purchased my salvation on the cross of Calvary. I'll have to praise Him ever for the wondrous love He showed. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His lovely name. I'm not ashamed.
to our veterans, what we think about it. The anointing of God is so real. It's so loving. And I want to say this to you today. You're here, you're, you're lost without God. In other words, you're not a Christian. You're one of the most honored guests in this building. Yes. Why do you say that, preacher? Because we love you. We want you. We thank you. We hear you. They're holding up the ladder down.
Amen. Amen. And uh, Pastor Danny Sullivan says to tell you he loves you and he's praying for you. We had the honor of preaching a 53 pastor appreciation last week. Praise our Lord. Thank you So that, that pastor, he uh, he's 84, 85 or something, and uh, he says, I'm going after my mountain. I'm going to be like Caleb. I'm going to get my mountain. Right on. Amen. And, and, but anyway, it, it, it is an honor and a privilege to be asked uh, to do these. Amen. And there's purpose, there's reason, and so... Uh, he said to tell you he loves you. He said, tell him, say, tell, I, tell that boy I love him. Pray the Lord, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. He said, tell that boy I love him, and I pray for him every day. Praise and, God. And, and so we thank the Lord for uh, Pastor Danny, but we thank the Lord for Pastor uh, Bobby yeah. and yeah. Sister Geneva and the Floyd family. Yeah. Can, can we give it up for the whole Floyd family today? God called you to be. A is for the anointing gifted to you to minister with his leading. <laughs> S is for shepherd appointed to lead God's flock. T is for teacher who studies and shares God's word. O is for obedience, a heart of compliant submission to him. R is for righteousness by which you live and are blessed. My pastor when our Lord Jesus left this earth, he told his special plan. He would give under shepherds for each flock a very special man. A shepherd must be caring, the sheep his love must show. He must, by his example, the way to others show. He must be good and wise and kind, his heart be right with God. He must gently lead with shepherd's staff, not chasing with the rod. My pastor is not perfect, but neither are you or I. He makes mistakes at times, I'm sure, and then we wonder why. Perhaps, it, perhaps it's because we forget to pray for him the way we should. Perhaps we've been most critical when his actions were not understood. We don't know of the burdens he carries tending to all the sheep. Sometimes there are late night excursions he's shepherding while we sleep. Sometimes he must rebuke a sheep for something said or done, and in secret he cries out to God with tears for that wayward one. For he, as the under-shepherd, must give account for his sheep, whether the way was pleasant or rocky or hilly or steep. The chief shepherd has said, Serve me honestly and willingly care for my own. There's a crown of glory waiting for you if you will faithfully serve me alone. And last but not least, Sister Janika. I did his first. She's very important to me. And you can think back on some of the things that she's helped you through or helped pray you through or kept harm coming from you. A pastor's wife. This is just some of the things that I found that a, a pastor's wife says in the dictionary is a noun. 
the pastor's wife, a rare species with a very peculiar calling. One flesh for the pastor, one who has laid down the normal life on the altar to God. One who keeps her husband's long hours, shoulders his pressures, feels his disappointments, and suffers his defeats, should there be one. One who loves her church family as her own and spends hours down on her knees praying for them. One who soothes the weary, weeps for the hurting, rejoices with the redeemed, and leads the lost to Christ. Some of the things our pastor's wife is a friend, an encourager, a prayer warrior, a confidant, a counselor, and a multitasking ninja. We love our pastor's wife. It seems every day, Sister Geneva, you've had to wear a different hat. And the last thing you want is a pat on the back. You stood so tall with Jesus and our pastor both at your side. You have fulfilled every role as friend, wife, mother, and bride. You and your husband are the models of one accord, and that's just one of the many reasons you are so loved and adored. Serving us as unto the Lord, you have given us more than we could ever deserve. You've been the most cherished role model of all by showing us how best to answer God's call. You have personally been there in good times, great times, and bad. You have been the mother many have wished for or never had. You made a decision a long time ago, a decision to allow others around you to grow. <laughs> the kindness and love you have shown is the best living example of the word we have ever known. You have given your life to be a pastor's wife. The pastor's wife you chose to be the image of the bride of Christ you'll always be to me. What you mean to this church and each and every life, we're so thankful that you chose Jesus and to be our pastor's wife. You just want to be a blessing, and that you have been. If the pastor or us had to choose, <laughs> we'd all choose you again. We love you, sister.
uh, uh, why they're getting corrected. Yeah. On the way over here this morning, I was thinking about an incident when I was uh, uh, early school age. And, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, everybody was uh, uh, bringing a present to the teacher. And I, and I didn't know. And, and, and so somebody said, uh, now don't forget your present on Friday, I believe it was, and on Monday, uh, 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 that was going to give the teacher a present. So I tell mom, I said, I'm supposed to bring a present to the teacher. She says, what's the occasion? She said, I said, I don't know. Nobody told me. Nobody explained to me. There was no note sent home uh, to the, uh, my mom about what was going on. So I had no idea. She said, well, what are we going to get? I said, I don't know. And, uh, and then I'm just a little bitty fella. And uh, it, like I said, it was in the elementary grade. And, and uh, I, I get to school the following week, and they bring in all these presents in. And I get all embarrassed because uh, I learned that day that uh, everybody was bringing presents for the newborn baby that was coming. And, uh, and, and so uh, 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 the, I, I brought a, a little pendant to give to the teacher. And the teacher was gracious to spare my feelings, and there was some other adults in there, and, and everybody was making fun of Donnie Lawson. Because here everybody's bringing baby stuff, and now bring a, this pendant for a woman to wear. And she literally cried and said, you thought of me. You thought of me. Yeah. You brought me a gift, and you thought of me. Some of the adults started to say something, Brother Chris, and they, she said, no, no, no. Everybody was thinking of the baby that's not even here yet, but he thought of me. And I said all that to say this, that by the help and grace of God, a lot of folk don't understand Pastor Appreciation Day and what it's all about. You got some of these that will think that the pastor conjured this day up so that he can get a, a free meal and they get a bigger offering. Oh. Amen? Amen. Amen. You might not like me after this, but I love you anyway. Tell somebody he loves us to tell, enough to tell us the truth. Amen. But pastor appreciation is a special time in honoring our pastors. Some merely think we're honoring a man or a woman, not realizing that they are representing God's plan for us. But God gave us pastors to encourage us to seek the things of God. As we honor our pastors, we're actually honoring God. Brother Larry was on some of this during Sunday school. Amen. And so uh, 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 the pastor appreciation is as much for us as it is for our pastors. Baby dedications are more than just a ceremony of dedication. It gives charge for the parents on how to raise that child. Through funerals are more than honoring the dead. It gives encouragement, support, and instruction for those who are living. It's not up to an individual to determine whether a pastor is worthy of receiving appreciation. It is showing honor and respect for the office, the position, God's plan for each of us. Many pastors are reluctant of allowing for a time for a pastor appreciation day. I've went into many churches, become a, a, a member of several churches, and never had a pastor appreciation day before we got there. And I'm not doing this to me. But uh, it's just like your offering. Oh, I know he's going to get no money for it's over with. Well, just hold on, buckle up. Amen. But pastor appreciation uh, uh, is more than that. A lot of pastors won't allow. Uh, 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 for a time for Pastor Appreciation Day. And I know there's pastors who won't allow for tithes and offers to be given. Come on. Come on. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Let me tell you, and I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn it the hard way. I had a, 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 a brother, another fellow minister, he came up, and I know he was uh, 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 just like the most of us. He was working from uh, day to day, uh, uh, paycheck to paycheck, and, and he came up with tears in his eyes, and he said, uh, 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 son, uh, uh, he'd always call me Timothy. Uh, he said, son, uh, he said, I just love you. Boy, I want to do that all morning. <laughs> I'm not taking vengeance. 
But he said, I just love you and I want to bless you. And he'd slip a little money in my hand. And I'd say, no, 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 you need that. You need that. Because I knew him and I knew what. I said, you just keep that. And he stood in front of me just a squalor like a little child. And he said, don't rob me of my blessing. Please don't steal my blessing. Please don't steal my blessing. Now, I know this pastor has learned uh, that you can steal the blessing of the congregation. Uh, that's why he'll stand up for your service after service uh, and tell you, come on, uh, and let's get you blessed. Amen. Uh, uh, my friend, God wants you blessed. He wants you blessed. And so uh, uh, setting the time yeah. to honor Pastor Appreciation Day is the time that we can get in position uh, to receive our blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Quite often, if you've been around me much, you've heard me say the statement uh, uh, that if you come today to get blessed, you might or might not leave blessed. Uh, but if you come to bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, uh, you will uh, uh, get blessed. Uh, I guarantee you you'll get blessed. But a lot of pastors will stop Pastor Appreciation Day. Just like the offerings, it can rob someone receiving a blessing from God. It is not just about honoring a person. It's about honoring the position they feel. I'm not going to take a poll and I'm not going to make it political, but I'm going to step along my brother Larry just a little bit here. Uh, when he mentioned politics this morning in Sunday school, uh, uh, now there's a lot of folk uh, uh, like the president and there's a lot of folk don't like the president. Uh, but still yet, uh, whenever who's in office walks out, uh, uh, people will honor uh, the office of the president. Right. Yeah. Amen? So today, we are honored. Whether you like this man and this woman and this family or not, we're honoring their position. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you like them because you wouldn't be here. Because yeah. uh, my daughter's pineapple upside down cake and my wife's green beans is not enough to compel you to come. <laughs> Amen? But we find that... Uh, 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 let me just share a few things that affect a pastor and his heart. There's nobody really knows what a pastor goes through. The person that really knows the most other than the pastor is the pastor's spouse. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then the next third line is the pastor's family. Yes. Family, I thank you for standing by me these years. Yes. And all the things that that you didn't know and you scratched your head about, I thank you that you still stood by me. Yeah. And even though you didn't understand some of the things I said done or, 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 or some of the times I left, and I keep going back, Brother Larry, to my oldest grandson. Uh, uh, he wasn't but just knee high to a grasshopper, and, and we come home from church one Sunday night, gathered at the house, going to eat some after Sunday, you know. Yeah, yeah, putting on that. And, and, and I get a phone call to come to Erlanger Hospital in Chattanooga and I'd already changed my clothes and, and I went back in to, uh, uh, and I started putting my other clothes back on and, 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 and Hunter looked over and said, Mima, why does people always have to leave? Why, why can't he just spend a little time with us? The sacrifices. We don't understand a lot of sacrifices that pastors go through. But we find this morning uh, there's some three things that affect a pastor and his heart. Brother Bobby, I testified uh, in the beginning of the service about uh, uh, spending uh, uh, his night in prayer for the guy who didn't even know his name. Uh, uh, my friend, but there are some things that will break a pastor's spirit. I was reluctant in sharing these because I don't want nobody to go down this list just to try to break the pastor's spirit. Come on. Come on. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. But do you know that murmuring will break a pastor's spirit? Yeah. Come on. Discord will break a pastor's spirit. Yeah. Division will break a pastor's spirit. Yeah. Gossiping people will break a pastor's spirit. Liars will break a pastor's spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Lukewarm people, yeah. oh, I can stay right there a while, will break a pastor's spirit. 
Oh, trust me, it gets better. Just hang on with me, will you? Unreasonable people will break a pastor's spirit. I've used this illustration. Uh, I, I, knew, I, know, I know a pastor that went to Florida to take the time to refresh on a vacation. It's okay, church, for a pastor to take a vacation. Yes. Amen. And I said this when I was pastor, and I'm going to say it again this morning. Do not expect your pastor to live a standard higher than what you are living. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen? Amen? What do you mean by that? Too many people expect the pastor to live a standard here while they go running around down here living like this, and then they run all over the neighborhood doing this. Yes. Amen? Amen? You keep your mouth shut. If that pastor is living above the, the standard you're living, you keep your mouth shut on him. Bible said, touch not the anointed and do not the prophets no harm. Amen. Is it not? Amen. And when you're talking about the pastor, his family, uh, uh, his wife, his, uh, the church, uh, uh, any of God's people, uh, uh, you're going against the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen? Amen? This pastor, he, he took some time off and he went to Florida and he lives here in Tennessee and, and, and while he was down there, he gets a phone call and he said, Pastor, I'm hungry. He said, okay. He, what can I do? He said, will you run over yonder and get me a pizza? He said, I, I'm sorry, I'm down in Florida. I said, well, uh -oh, can you come back up here and get me a pizza and bring it to me? Wanting him to make that 10 hour, 12 hour trip from Florida and to go pick him up a pizza that was just a couple of miles down the road. Oh. Amen? Unreasonable people. Yes. Now, I, I know I'm not talking to nobody in here that's unreasonable. <laughs> Unfaithful people yes. will break a pastor's spirit. Yes. Most of these are self-explanatory. If you got any more questions afterward about them, ask one of these preachers. Ask Brother Justin. He may be just visiting this morning, but ask him. Amen. Ask some of these about these words. Uh, uh, you got those uh, now, uh, uh, Brother Chris said. He tried to help me the best he knew how, and he stood up before the church when, and, 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 and I, I, I wrestled with a message about a little step and big impact. And you really don't know the impact that you had on Brother Chris Self. That day he came out Sunday morning and he's preaching about getting mad at your neighbor and won't shoot your neighbor's dog. Brother Chris came to me and he said, Did you tell him about me wanting to kill my neighbor's dog? And you made an impact on him. Nobody knew that uh, the, uh, the dog was troubling him and, and was having problems. And Brother Bobby was just uh, preaching away and didn't know nothing about it. And he said, let me tell you, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. You don't want to shoot your dog. Huh? Why are you going to shoot his dog? And, and boy, that, that's, that made a big impact on uh, Brother Chris. But Brother Chris stood up before the church and he said, church, uh, he said, I don't know how pastor stands it. I don't know how they deal with it. Uh, 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 we're standing up here looking back there at all of you uh, and the way you act and the looks on your face. Uh, I said all that to get to this. Uh, and when those that are sitting in the pew with the rolling eyes. Come on. Sister Barbara has told me several times that I heard them eyes roll. <laughs> Y'all know what rolling eyes mean. <laughs> Hurtful words will break the pastor's spirit. The number one reason for pastors leaving the, uh, the ministry and quitting pastoring. There will be countless of pastors today, in the, uh, uh, tonight, before they go to bed, will close their Bible and say, that's the last time I'm going to pastor. That's the last time I'm going to preach. That's the last time I'm going back to church. That's the last time. Monday morning they'll get up and they'll uh, wrestle around and wrestle around. I, I, I quit, I quit, I quit. Uh, but by the time the next service comes around, the Holy Ghost is stirring them up uh, and put a little bomb from Gilead back in them, thank the Lord, uh, and get them mended back up. Uh, well, they'll stand back up uh, and declare the gospel of truth. Come on. Amen? But many are, many do quit. Many do leave. 
Brother Bobby started, uh, he got born again when he was uh, 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 in 1975. Preached his first message in 1975. Quit listening to God and listen to a man and stopped preaching for a while. Come on. Amen? Come on. Now, I, I'm not going to give all the stats about it. A lot of times I like to give the stats about the individual I'm talking about. But I thank God for 42 years of service here. Yeah. Amen. Thank God that this little lady stood by. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes she had to get the whip out and straighten him up and get him back in line. Sometimes she says, "Now, Bobby, you can't do that." Sometimes she says, "Now, Bobby, you're going to have to get up and get back up there, and you're going to have to do what God told you to do." You must know him pretty well. Well, not well enough, but I know quite a bit. Come on. Amen? That's why he gets nervous when I'm up here behind his pulpit. <laughs> Amen? But they don't feel like they're making a difference. They have a vision and a direction for the church, but the church is not willing to go there. They feel they're not making a difference. Pastors are people we turn to for help. And many of our pastors burn a candle at both ends, working long hours, balancing heavy demands and experiencing stress and burnout and unrealistic family demands. Pastors usually give out more than they receive, often feel unappreciated. If we believe God has sent us a pastor for such a time as this, uh, giving thanks and appreciation to our pastor is really showing thanks and appreciation to God. Somebody give a hand clap of praise and appreciate it. Here's a few things that will bless a pastor's spirit. If you want to be blessed, then bless. If you want tomatoes, plant tomatoes. If you want potatoes, plant potatoes. If you want cows, don't grow donkeys. Amen. 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 And if you want to be blessed, then bless. Yeah. Bless. If you want to be blessed, bless. Yeah. A loving word will bless a pastor's spirit. Yeah. Oh, we can go a long way right there, can't we? Come on. Yeah. Amen. A call in the middle of the day to say, I'm praying for you, will bless your pastor's spirit. Yeah. Not a call griping and complaining about everything. A card for no reason. Will bless a pastor's spirit. Yeah. Too many times we wait till once a year, and most of the time it's in October because it's set aside for Pastor Appreciation Month yeah. to bless our pastor, and then we complain the other 364. Come on. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But a, 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 a car. I watched that lady. I I I, I like jewelry. And and, and and I'll bend over backwards to get her whatever she wants. And, uh, uh, and I was sitting in the uh, uh, auditorium in Nashville when the Gators was singing and we was high up there. And I looked way down there and I saw Sister Vestal Goodman and when she brought my uh, hand up and I seen that big old stone on her finger, I thought, man, she, she needs somebody to run around just holding her hand up that rock was so big. And I looked over at Sister Marvin and I said, you want something like that? She said, no, I don't want nothing big and gaudy like that. And I, 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 I went in to jewelry stores and I'd buy a, a jewelry, put it on my way, and I get tickled to death, and I get excited. I, uh, the day I get to get it out of my way and give it to her, and I hand it to her, expecting a great big old reaction. That's pretty. <laughs> Then I hand her a 50 cents dollar store uh, uh, card and she'll boo-hoo like a little child. Yeah. And she'll just cry and cry and cry. Yeah. Some of you guys need some uh, 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 advice. I, I won't charge you. But giving them a card or an invitation to uh, uh, dinner to, to go eat 
Brother Bobby's favorite place, if you don't know yet, is go to Corral. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and so if you can't go and be with him, just go pick up a Golden Corral a gift card and give it to Brother Bobby. Now, I don't have a problem asking for everybody else. I won't ask for myself, but I won't have a problem asking for everybody else. While you're getting up a, a, a gift card to go to the crowd, go ahead and pick a few more up for Brother Larry and Brother Steve. Amen. 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 I got to get back on this message. I know you're getting hungry. That big loaf sister, I've been wanting for a long time, Sister Marva May. I'm about to get into it. But let me tell you, a love offering will bless a pastor's spirit. While he's preaching, it seems like he's struggling, and you can hear a mouse running the carpet shouting out, Amen! Will bless the pastor's spirit. Yeah. My grandpa said it like this. He said, if you'll holler out, Amen, it's like taking that uh, uh, an old coon dog out there and saying, Sick him, sick him, boy, sick him, boy. Yeah. Anybody ever coon hunted in here? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. A few of you. Y'all know what it was like? Yeah. We had no walker and ham. I think well, he'd run up that tree and it straight up and be high as the ceiling. And I'm not exaggerating. He'd, he'd run up that tree. Yeah. And the more you holler, the, the more he'd get all excited. Y'all like seeing Brother Bobby going around here going, Somebody go to church with me. If you start shouting out, Amen, he'll get even more excited. Yeah. Now his family is looking at me and saying, now hold it down there, little brother Lonnie. We, 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 we don't want him to get too excited because of recent activities that took place. But now he done told you, family, that y'all don't put him out to pasture. Come on. Amen. And I'm going to stand by him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, man. So he's going to preach a, 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 when he turns 100, he's going to preach a revival here, he said. And I said, told him I was going to help him. So we're not going nowhere. Amen? Amen? But a well-placed man will bless a pastor's spirit. A love offering will bless a pastor's spirit. People who volunteer will bless a pastor's spirit. As you know, I travel a whole lot and, and in a lot of different places. And Tennessee is supposed to be known as a volunteer state. But I, 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 it looks like in the, the state of Tennessee, you've got less volunteers in church than you do any other state. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Faithfulness in church attendance will bless a pastor's spirit. Amen. Amen. Don't be like the little lady said, now, Pastor, I'm sick and tired. Only time I come to church, all you preach about is Christmas and Easter. Yeah. That pastor looked back at that lady and said, Well, ma'am, if you come some other time besides Christmas or Easter, you'll hear something else. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Thankfulness in church attendance will bless a pastor. Yeah. Amen. Doing what you say you'll do will bless a pastor's spirit. Some of you find yourself in a unique situation this morning because your pastor is your dad. He's never really been my pastor in the manner he has for you, but he has always been your uh, a father and your pastor. He's always been the priest of your home and loving you and your siblings more than he could ever love anybody else other than his bride. Uh, your pastor and your co-pastor, your dad and mom uh, have always been lovers of people. Uh, you can't be in the ministry without being lovers of people. Uh, another thing you need to understand about today, it's not only about a hymn, uh, uh, but but it's also about a her as well yeah. for their team. Your dad holds the office of a pastor, but they share the many responsibilities together. Even though you may vote on a man to hold the office, as a team they both hold the same office to some degree. The wife may not hold the office, but she shares the responsibility with her husband. I can never do what I do without my wife and her help with me and for me. She's not just the evangelist's wife or the pastor's wife, but in many ways she evangelizes her pastors with me and the people in the church. How many members? Oh, I know that they have cried in the wee hours of the night for this church and for the people of this church. About how many members does that and will do that? I know they gave out their own pockets for this church and the people in the church. 
church. I know they have passionately worked hard in secular jobs without church salaries. When the church couldn't afford it, I've seen them give of themselves. When no one else in the church would, I've seen them provide. When others could have and would not, I've seen them both prepare for services as though there'd be a hundreds or thousands in service and only a few show up. I've seen the disappointment in their eyes. I've had it in my eyes more times than I care to think about. But there's something about pastors. If they did this for money, they would be among the greatest fools in the world. But they do it because the call of God. The call of God. That man could not pastor and answer a call of God until he first answered the call to salvation. Yeah. Yeah. You'll not do anything for God until you've answered the call of salvation. Yeah. And after the call of salvation, then you can step into your destiny and your callings that He has called you to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Oh, my friend. There will be a lot of ups and downs, but great is a pastor's reward. Sure. The pastor's office is the highest office in the land. Yeah. It's higher than the President of the United States. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's higher than the President of the United States. Y'all seen how that all of them flocked around President Trump when he was shot. Why don't we do that when somebody comes against our pastor? Yes. Come, on. Come on now, am I losing you? Amen. Why don't we gather around when somebody begins to go against our pastor? Yes. Why don't we stand in the gap and make up a hedge? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I still feel the call of that God in my life. So strong, I could not. Uh, I could not heed the call. I can't quit. I can't give up. Amen. I've had people to say, uh, after my own experience, they'd say, "Why don't you quit? Why don't you stop?" I can't stop. Come on. I can't stop. Right. I can't find it in the Word of God to stop. Right. I can't find it in my spirit to stop. I might die behind the pulpit, but I can't stop. Come on. Why? Because it's the greatest call that's ever been given. Yeah. This man got a call to serve our country. He's not only a pastor, but he's a veteran. And I thank him uh, for uh, 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 maintaining my freedom that I can stand here today and preach the word of God to you. He answered the call to the country. Temporarily leaving family to fight for our country. Not just his, but our country. Why? He heard the call. There's an old song in the Heavenly Highways hymn that uh, uh, goes along the uh, 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 same lines about hearing that call. Amen. Hear the call that comes ringing over the restless waves. It said, send the light. Send the light. So God sends a pastor. God sends a pastor's wife. God sends a pastor's family because some people begin to cry out. Lord, send the light to my community. Send the light to my family. Send the light to Monterey. Send the light, send the light. Yeah. Call went into glory. And this young man heard the call ringing over the restless waves. The restless waves of what? His restless spirit. Oh, we're not going to get into all that. I've got to get this done. I've got to get some of my son in law some smoked pork tenderloin. <laughs> Amen. 
But let me tell you, if they did it for money, they would be among the greatest fools. If they did it for fame, they would be among the saddest people. If they, uh, but they, they do it because of the call of God. Uh, and knowing these disappointments of a pastor and they still feel the call of God. Uh, but my friend, they can't quit. I can't quit and you shouldn't quit. That's part and partial of what separates a man called or a person called and a person desiring. I've heard a lot of people through my life have said, I think I'll go to Bible school and I think I'll go join this organization and I think I'll get credentialed and I think I'll get me a church and I'll get me a pastor a ship where I can have a paycheck and I'll have me a place provided to live and I'll have this and I'll have that. But you know, the first wind comes along and poof, the house goes away. Amen? Let me tell you, it takes a person established, rooted and grounded in God to stand when the troubles and the winds of adversity begin to blow your way. I've seen people that desire ministry. And I've seen those that are called to ministry. I've seen people uh, desire, those that were, uh, had a desire, I've seen them quit. I've seen those that were called, they might get knocked down. They might even have said the words, I quit. But thanks be to God, I see them get back up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I see them get back up. They cannot quit. They have nothing really to quit to, nothing in order to receive any kind of satisfaction in life. As an evangelist and a pastor, I realize that I'm first and foremost a man, a person. I've got my ups and downs. I've got my ins and outs. I've got my goods and bads. But there is the call of God upon my life. It drives me onward and forward to fulfill that call of God. Folks, you should appreciate your pastor. It's good for you and good for him. Scripture tells us that the pastor is a gift to the church. Jeremiah 3.15 as we read. He said, I give you pastors according to my heart. Will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Ephesians 4 and 11 teaches us that these uh, are the gifts Christ gave to the church. Jesus gave the church a gift. What was that gift? And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors. You thought it wasn't just about you. You thought it was about them, didn't you? But he said, some teachers. Where's Sister Kelly go? Children's church. Children's church. Teachers. There's a great need for pastors to be appreciated and for pastors to be prayed for, supported, and encouraged. You owe your pastor at least that much. Yeah. There's a lot of folk like the claim, Brother Bobby as pastor. But that's the only part of support they give him the whole time. They don't pray for him. They don't show up for church. They don't encourage him. Amen? Amen? Oh, Y'all was expecting a different message today, wouldn't you? Well, my apologies. I let you down on that department, but I don't apologize for what I'm preaching. Moses' hands became weary in Exodus 17 and 12 so much they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it and Aaron and Hur supported his hand one on the one side, the other on the other side his hands were steady until they going down to the sun. Yes, I see the time. Just hold on. Try to give some of these other churches time to come in and honor this pastor. That's why they picked me. They wanted somebody that was long-winded enough to hold the congregation so they could get time to eat. You can laugh. You understand what was going on with uh, uh, Moses, the pastor, his hands worshiping God. The army of Israel prevailed in battle. But when Moses couldn't keep his hand up uh, with the weight of the arm, the length of the time, and the fatigue of humanity, the army of Israel would start losing. When Pastor Bobby's hands are down, the church here at the Full Gospel Assembly of the Living Waters will start losing the battle. But when Pastor Bobby's hands is up, yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. When his hands 
is up, we win as a church. It don't matter if he is fighting a battle on the hospital bed. That don't mean his faith is growing weak. I'm glad somebody said that. I might always go there. My friend, we say we want more faith, we want greater faith. I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to get more faith, you're going to go through something. You're going to deal with some stuff. Faith ain't just like a bottle of water that I can just give you and, oh boy, you've got some more faith. Oh no, you're going to have to get thirsty. You're going to be looking at that water. Come on, Brother Chris. You're going to be looking at that water. It's going to keep moving away from you. It's going to keep moving. And your lips are going to start getting dry. And you're going to start leaking them. Go ahead. Help me illustrate here. You're going to start leaking them. And you're going to get thirsty. And you're going to want some water. Uh, and, and you may have to uh, uh, go through some hunting. Uh, you may have to go through some looking. Uh, you may have to search things. Uh, uh, the five words say it. Uh, and the enemy may even have a hole in your bottle of water. Uh, and you may have to wrestle him uh, uh, to take it away from uh, him. You may have to wrestle him to take it away from him, uh, uh, my friend. Uh, that's why he tells us uh, uh, to lay a hold of faith. Just because you witness somebody going through something don't mean their lack or absence of faith in the matter. Right. Right. Aaron and her, had, they were the church, they represent the church members, and they was holding up uh, Moses' arms. Amen. Thank God for all you Aaron and hers out there. Yeah. That, that is H-U-R, not H-E-R. <laughs> Amen? But we find that uh, 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 the pastor uh, is blessed and the church prevails and, and wins the battle. Uh, my friend, if the church is not praying and supporting the church and the pastor, they lose sight of the battle and what the battle is about. The battle is about the souls of mankind and the equipment of the saints. The pastor of the church uh, has got to be busy about the Father's business, the business of souls. Uh, Aaron and her supported Moses. Uh, let us support our pastors. Uh, it's good to find a way to support your pastor. Pray and support your pastor. You'll be blessed for it. Uh, ask God to show you uh, how uh, you can best support your pastor your church uh, and we'll be blessed for it uh, and if you help him hold up his hands loving him and praying uh, uh, my friend loving in spite of his humanity yeah. understand praying doesn't mean praying about him or praying upon him the word praying there is the word p-r-e-y i-n-g Pastor's responsibility is far greater than yours as a Christian for the responsibility is to watch over your soul. Yes. Yes, it is. Come on. I have a story. I'm about to come to a close. Don't shout yet. I heard a story yesterday. A preacher was at the prison preaching. A young man stood up and said, You ain't going to tell me how I'm going to live. The guard said, now you settle down or I'm going to put the cuss on you and take you out of here. He just got louder and louder and just got more ugly and more ugly. And that preacher looked at him and said, son, you're here but your choice. And you'll live the way you choose. No, I will not tell you how you're going to live. And I ain't going to hear this to what you, if you didn't have to come in here, you can go ahead and leave if you want to. You said that was that. No. The prisoners had a choice whether they wanted to go into the service or not. He got unruly. And the guards sat the cuss on him and started escorting him out. You see, it's our choice. <laughs> Joshua said, choose you this day. You know, he was, he was uh, Moses' uh, 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 pastor. Uh, that took uh, Moses' place. He's the pastor that took Moses' place. Joshua. And he said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. I just preached a revival not long ago and the pastor got up the following Sunday and he said, people, y'all need to choose whether you want to have church or not. You need to choose whether we're going to uh, come in here and worship the Lord, the Lord with all of our heart or we're going to just close the doors and have home interior parties and temple wire parties. Amen? Come on. This is serious business. Yeah, it is. Lives are at stake. 
There's people died and gone to hell since we've been here this morning. And pastors are trying to help us along the way. Hebrews 13 tells us to obey them to have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. Uh, uh, they may us give account uh, that they do it with joy and not with grief uh, uh, for that is unprofitable for you. Some of the ways to encourage your pastors. We talked about some of those things earlier. Provide him a trip. Provide him a weekend vacation or something. Encourage them. Uh, encourage him. Remember his birthday, the anniversary. Remember his family, the members of his family. Become involved. Ask the pastor about his vision for the church and how you can help and openly listen to the messages he preach and, 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 and say amen during those messages. Attend activities. Be positive about what the pastor is trying to do for the church. Be loyal. Help eliminate the stress and the negativism in the church. Help teach and mentor younger and weaker Christians to have a spirit of unity. Invite friends in church uh, uh, as a way of witnessing and supporting your pastor's vision. Uh, tell your pastor, thank you for being my pastor. Uh, and his family, thank you for sharing him with us. Uh, be protective of the pastor's personal time with his family. Respect the boundaries and the personal time. He takes off, volunteer to work in the church. Uh, uh, take personal responsibility to create excitement uh, and enthusiasm and above all pray 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 somebody say pray pray for your pastor and his family yes. there's tremendous pressures and demands that are associated with being in the ministry that most people never fully understand pray for God's direction and protection see when the devil can't get him and him direct or her direct he's going to try to slap a heart attack on that or he's going to try to slap something on the, that one yeah. or some of the others. Yeah. And if he can't get through to them, then he's going to come at that one. He's yeah. going to come at that one. He's going to come yeah. at that one. And somewhere along the line, he's going to come at you. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the love and the compassion uh, that the pastor has for people. Yes. I told you earlier, they had to be loving people. Everybody, I want you to just put your hands toward Pastor Bobby and Sister Geneva. If you don't agree with what I'm fixing to pray, then you just take your hand down in the process. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your work in creation and the abundant blessings that you have as your children. We thank you for the glorious gospel and the gift of your son Jesus Christ as the one mediator between God and man. We thank you for this church, the company of the redeemed, and for the local church where believers gather to express their faith and obedience such as we do here at the Full Gospel Assembly Church of the Living Waters. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Pastor Bobby Floyd and his wife, Sister Geneva, and his sons, Brother Steve, and his wife, Sister Pam, and Brother Larry, and his wife, Sister Erica, and, and his daughter, Sister Robbie, and her husband, Brother Tommy, and all the grandkids, Sister Kelly, and, 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 and all of them. I go to name them, Lord, I, I'll forget them. But Lord, we thank you for all the families which your word says you gave to your church to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, according to Ephesians 4. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Bob and Sister Geneva Floyd and their family for their faithfulness to your cause. For the Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians 4 2 that it's required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Thank you, Lord, for his personal commitment to you, Lord Jesus, as his Savior and Lord and for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the love Pastor Bobby uh, Floyd has for his wife and for his family, demonstrating a stable and healthy family. But the Scripture teaches us church leadership in 1 Timothy chapter 3 that he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him and proper respect. Thank you, Lord, for his thoughtful explanation of your word as he heeds your call to preach the word and be prepared in season and out of season, correcting, rebuking, and encouraging, and great patience and careful instruction according to 2 Timothy 4. Thank 
thank you, Lord, for his leadership in our church services and the orderly manner in which he leads us seeking to fulfill 1 Corinthians 14 and the biblical call that all things be done decently and in order. Thank you for his interest in the flock and under his care and the burden that he carries for your people. Thank you for Sister Geneva Floyd and her complimenting to his leadership and her service and thoughtfulness as well, serving beside him as a co-pastor. May you continue to bestow your richest blessing upon this ministry, couple and their family as they seek to fulfill their call amongst us and bring you glory. Father God, bless our pastor, Brother Bobby and Sister Geneva and Brother Steve and his family and Brother Larry and his family and all their families with inspiration and revelation and knowledge and wisdom and strength and wealth and health. And in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody say it. This morning, before I go any further, without us all, you hear this morning that you want prayer for any reason. Especially if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Especially if you're a backslider. Especially if you're not sure if this is your last breath you take, if heaven will be your home or not. Without asking you to stand. See, when you want it bad enough, you'll fight for it. Amen? Amen. Right. If you don't pray, just for a brief moment, come come and give you over Pastor Bobby and Sister Geneva and their family and their great family. <laughs> Thank you. To stand for Jesus, He took a stand for me. He purchased my salvation on the cross of Calvary. I'll have to praise Him ever for the wondrous love He showed. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His lovely name.